Every student of the Bible should have a really good grasp of the Read, Reread Bible Study Tool. I'm Brian Catherman with SaltyBeliever.com and today I'm talking about Bible Study Tools, specifically the Read, Reread Tool. It, it might be just as simple as it sounds, but I think there's a little more to it. So yes, reading the Bible, of course, but there's a lot more going on because God's Word came to us in written form. That's how He intended to communicate His revelation to His people. And so we need to be able to read that revelation, and we should be able to do that well. So let's say you're taking a passage of Scripture and you want to study it. How do you use the Read, Reread tool? Which you should be using every single time you study the Bible. Well, I'm going to start by saying you want to read with a purpose, with, with an objective, and that is to study, and that is to learn, and that is to, to be blessed by the reading and the meditating on and the praying through God's Word. So you want to be purposeful about your reading. It's, it, you can read passively, and, and I, sometimes I would encourage that you do. It's wonderful. But sometimes you just want to really have an intentional game plan on what you're doing. So you might take one read through the Bible and, ju and just read it through all the way, start to finish. Then you might come back and, and say, okay, I'm going to read it again, but this time I'm going to write down questions as I go. Or this time I'm going to go really slow and, and really methodically meditating on every word and thinking about various things. Or maybe I'm just going to read through it real fast and see just what rises to the surface. Or, or maybe this pass through as I'm reading many passes through, I'm going to do it telescopically. I'm going to pull way back, get the really big picture, maybe, you know, a couple paragraphs before and after the passage I'm working on, a couple chapters before and after. Maybe I'm going to read the whole book in one sitting and get the whole feel of this particular book of the Bible in which the text I'm working on resides. Or maybe I'm going to like draw from all of my regular Bible reading what I know of the whole Bible, like really big picture pullback. But then also I'm going to like zoom in, get out the, the magnifying glass and really look closely. And, and work on maybe what the meaning of one word really is. Okay, not just that, not just a word study of one word and then that's it, not just a big picture view, but both, and everything in between so that I can really get a good handle on what's going on. So I wanna be really thoughtful about what I'm reading. It's like meditating on it. I'm, I'm reading with some sense of meditation. I'm thinking through it. And of course, I'm. I'm asking God to help me. That's what we need to be doing. Lord, show me as I'm going. Lord, what does this mean? How do I understand this? Like, Lord, guide me and direct me and illuminate things and, and help me unpack this to know you and to know your words. So you want to read prayerfully. You also want to read imaginatively. Um, you want to use your imagination and just kind of see what the scene really looks like. Paint that picture. That doesn't mean that what you see in your head is the infallible, inspired, what actually happened word. But it does help you to start to get curious and observe well and think about it well and process it well. Uh, you know, place yourself in the scene if that's appropriate. Uh, think about what it must have felt like and, and sounded like. And, and if it's a narrative, like what, what's the dust on the road like and smell the air. Like just put yourself there if you can. Or what would it be like if you were experiencing what the writer was experiencing? This is just kind of using your imagination. And, and you want to go through this with curiosity asking questions so that when you get to the bombarding question tool and some of the other tools, you're working through this, reading through it, reading through it again, reading through it again, and you're asking a lot of questions. It's, it's the read, reread tool, so it's a repeated reread. And you want to do it with great you know, patience. This, this takes time. This is a process. And it's a good process. You don't, you don't just want to read it once and then go, okay, that's great. Put it off to the side and just start working on all the other tools or running off to your favorite commentaries and spending all this time reading that without actually spending the time reading God's revelation. Do the hard work. Do the heavy lifting. You will, you will be greatly blessed by this. It will benefit you. So I want to encourage that you do that. And then if you can, read in the original languages. Many of us, you know, that's tough. We can't. Uh, so... And even if you can read from the original languages, you should read from additional translations. I would say a vast array of translations. Translations take different approaches. The experts have to make different decisions on, on word choices and how they do things. And that can really help us sort of see what's there and kind of unlock some curiosity and help us with some of the other tools. So, so you might want to be sure that you've got a good handful of formal equivalent translations. This is where they, they try to take the word and they try to get to the closest word. Maybe they, the translational theory is to leave some ambiguity, ambiguity, or maybe 
they want to answer you know some of the questions that we might have there's different approaches to translation which is really helpful kind of word for word or the it's not really a true word for word but the closest we can get to it and then maybe you want to go over to the other side to like what's called the dynamic equivalent where it's kind of taking the thought trying to answer the questions of that thought and then giving it back to the, the person in the language they can read so um Formal equivalent and dynamic equivalent translations are very helpful. There are some, if you just get a straight interlinear that's going to be, you know, it sounds like you're, you're hearing from Yoda, but you're getting the word order in Greek that's not as important as it is in English, but you kind of see it that way. Um, and then some that are just really smooth, easy readers. So I like to read from lots of these. You know, I, I like to read from the ESV and the CSB, and I like the Net Bible. It's a little clunkier, but it helps me with study. And I read from an interlinear, and then I'll read sometimes from Young's literal translation or something like that, and then the King James, and maybe the New King James, and then you know I'll kind of move through this process where I'm reading, um, you know, the the New American Standard, like an older one, and then a newer one because they've changed translational theories. So did uh, the NIV '84 and 2011. So it's helpful to read from some of that. Uh, you can go over to something like the the New Living Translation, where you're reading through and and getting more of just sort of a, a survey view. There's this amplified version where all the extra synonyms get added. I mean, those aren't in God's Word, but that just helps you think. Uh, and it's just helpful. Uh, there's this legacy Bible that I've kind of been enjoying that I've picked up and started looking at. And so there's, there's lots of these translations that you can read, and maybe that'll help you. I'll also take different translations, and I will listen to them. I use the Dwell app, and I'll listen to the scripture that I'm trying to study and learn. Sometimes I'll speed it up and kind of just listen fast. Sometimes I'll slow it way down. You can set some things in there, so like has pauses between stuff, so I'll listen and think. So a lot of times I'll listen and read along. You know, I'll get a pen out, and I'll work on it very actively. But here's the whole idea for the whole thing. You've got to be reading. If you want to unlock what Scripture says, if you want to be a good student of the Bible, you've got to read the Bible, and you've got to read it well. And so that's where the read, reread tool comes in in good Bible study.